point is, now I get in a lot of arguments because people say, well, this is a tam-tam. It's not a gong. So, but uh, all gongs are gongs. Tam-tam is a symphonic term that was used to designate the difference between a flat-faced gong and a gong with a, a boss on it or a cup. And because different scores would call for different types. Like if you're playing uh, Puccini's Madame Butterfly, it calls for bossed gongs, tuned gongs, the specific notes. And if you're playing um, some other thing, usually it's just a, a big symphonic gong that you want to crash from. But yeah, I always call them gongs. And in a lot of cultures, the term gong is used or something close to that, a gang, a goong. Uh, because it's it's the sound that it makes, gong. So that's what I call. Uh, anybody here play hand drums, like um, frame drums or baron or something? Basically, what we have here, the, the gong is a metal frame drum. So if you think of like a a, a Middle Eastern tar or something, it's it's a bent piece of wood with a shell, or I mean, with a, with a head tacked onto it, and the head is a membrane, and the shell is stiff, so it holds that membrane. If we look at a, a gong like this, it's basically the same thing. They take a sheet of metal, and they hammer it and create this edge, which is stiff. And the face is actually a vibrating membrane. So a gong is pretty much a metal frame drum. Even, even the bossed type ones are the same way. They've got the bent edge, which gives it that stiffness, and the front is a membrane. Now you can have a wind gong, which is just a flat type gong without a bent edge too. But Pisces are all this type, based on your Chinese traditional chow gong. They all have the bent edge. But yeah, so it's um, it's a frame drum. And a lot of times I'll, I'll even play these by hand for different effects. <laughs> gong and he told me all about it. He says, but I don't like the sound of it. So the first thing I asked him is, well, what are you playing it with? He says, well, I've got a nice timpani now. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if you're going to have a big gong like this, you need a big mallet to get the sound. Because if you use a timpani mallet, you're only going to get the high end. You're not going to get that mass moving. So of course he didn't like this gong. He had something like a 30 inch, 32 inch like this. And I said, Get a real mallet. So that's the first thing I always tell people is, you know, you buy a gong, you have, a, have to get a good mallet. Now, if you want the big sound, you need a big mallet with a big head, and this is weighted some, and you're going to be able to get all that mass going and get that sound. That's, you know, that's, that's the big difference, is, is having the right mallets for the sound you want. If you want that big sound, you have to have a big mallet. Now, like on the 80 inch gong, I mean, the mallet hit is like this, and it's a huge handle, and the thing must weigh like 40 pounds. But to get all that mass moving, you need this you know, gigantic mallet to, to get that going. So that's important. And as you can see, I have all kinds of different beaters and mallets, and you know, each one brings out different frequencies and different sounds and that. So we'll talk about that. First, let's just look at. Um, the places to play the gongs, the sweet spots. <clears throat> I get a lot of flack too because people say you shouldn't hit the gong in the center. Well, it's like, why not? If that's the sound you want, you know, I, I hit the center a lot because you get a focused sound. You're getting just the mainly the pitch of the gong. At the low end, you're getting that focused note. So 
well, you know, it's, it's to me, it's all about what type of sound do you want. It's like that's why I have a, a lot of different mallets, and then I play, I play the gongs anywhere. I, other people said you shouldn't play on the edge because you can damage the gong. Well, if you're totally whacking it, sure, but you know, I never beat beat these things. You know, they're they're fine instruments, so I take care of them and play them appropriately. But I use the edge a lot. The edge is great to just sort of activate. To me, it's about sound, and that's what fascinates me. So let's just look at, at some different sounds and stuff. Now, I like using like uh, chord wound vibe mallets. And if you play the gongs like in the center, you're just going to get the very high bell notes. as he can and that's most people's idea so when they come to see me play a concert they're they're totally surprised because they're like well what can you do I mean gongs have one sound it's like no I can get millions of sounds out of here there's a whole orchestra in these gongs so it's di different mallets bringing out different sounds or just even like I made and they're really soft. I call them zero impact because you don't really hear the mallet, but you can just get this really nice sort of a I do with the gongs, so I'll use 
some for like a backdrop, almost like scenery. You know, if you see a stage play, you know, the house comes down and then, you know, the bridge and all that. That's the way I look at the gongs because I can, you know, people are playing and I can create these, these sort of washes, these backdrops. shattered but these are really great to play with. I like to use them. Sabar sticks. It's like an ultra thin timbali stick. Sabar are um, real skinny African drums, usually played in a set of two or three, and the drummer plays one hand and one stick, and it's really kind of a neat thing. But I, I bought a whole bunch of these like 10, 12 years ago, and I don't think they make them anymore. But They, they come to a point and then they also have a little ball in but I use this a lot in my meditation sessions too.
Uh, this is the ever popular <coughs> space sound or whale sound. And it's, you just use a friction mallet like this. <laughs> level. So it's vibrating and it's, it's just like bowing, you know, a violin or something. It's the same sort of idea. violin or something. Buy the cheapest bow you can find. Um, you can usually find something for like 40 bucks out there. I mean, it's a piece of metal. You don't need the, the greatest thing in the world. Um, I know you can even buy some percussion bows that are about like 40 bucks. But this is this is a this is like a three-quarter violin bow and this is a cello bow. And baseball works out real well too. And there's some Company's now making some uh, percussion bows. Uh, all you want to do is just draw it across the flat edge here. You can see I've got some rosin here already, but just draw it across here, and that's where you're going to get your sound. Now, if I do a lot of bowing on something, I'll turn it around so I have a better access to to that. Let me I'll turn this around so we can see. Yeah, I just just want to be on the edge. They're temperamental with the bows. That's kind of a tricky thing sometimes. So we get it off of this side.
of different harmonics. sounds that way. 